the Maritime uh, Forum uh, came, started back in 2018 um, as a result of an ambition uh, from my predecessor, uh, Gary Ampleby, um, to sort of establish it in a forum in its own right, uh, having uh, sort of been a fledgling under the wing of the, uh, the Freight Forum uh, for several years, um, to see sort of maritime activities having strong synergy and affinity with, um, with freight transportation. Um, but with the sort of um, economic condition uh, and, and sort of things that were going on at the time around Brexit, um, Gary thought it'd be a, a good, uh, an opportune time to, uh, to sort of establish the Maritime Forum um, as an entity in its own right. Um, and the sort of the thinking behind that were, it was very much uh, that it was a sort of timely um, inception um, with with a lot of the, the sort of risks and, and changes that were expected um, in the maritime industry as a, as a result of, uh, of the Brexit negotiations and the, uh, the subsequent sort of uh, changes in, in trading conditions and, and policy and regulation that that could uh, incur. And uh, and also the the sort of other major I suppose challenge for the, the maritime industry at the moment um, in in sort of addressing the impact that um, maritime activities and, and shipping has on uh, on the environment um, and uh, um, carbon emissions. It's, it's a developing uh, forum, quite a young forum, and, and we're just sort of trying to grow the membership at the moment. And uh, if that's uh, if that's something that's of interest um, to members and um, you know, in terms of technology, um, improvements in technology in how the ships operate themselves, and uh, I think that's that's definitely something that uh, that could be brought more to the fore as part of the activities um, that we look at in future. The Maritime Forum's uh, sort of ambition is very much to help um, the industry understand um, where there may be inefficiencies um, or. Um, detrimental environmental environmental impacts uh, from the 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 way they're doing things currently, um, and help them understand how um, technology, either existing technology uh, that's used in in other transport applications, um, can be adapted uh, for use in in maritime applications uh, to sort of smooth the uh, the flow and transgression of uh, of freight and cargo, uh, so through the ports and uh, and onto its onward destination, um, and also um, I think very much uh, the, until now I suppose a lot of ITS applications have focused on that uh, kind of commercial um, cargo ship and goods shipping operations, but uh, looking at the potential really to to sort of bring in uh, some of the uh, the concepts and the technologies that we'd associate with things like mass. Um, and see how they could be applied um, in, a, in a sort of shipping um, or maritime context uh, for the movement of, of people uh, more using uh, using ships and, and boats um, than is uh, than is currently done. When we think about uh, the current sort of uh, picture of shipping, the sort of ninety percent of goods are moved globally um, by by shipping. Um, and it's obviously quite a uh, quite a big potential there um, for delays and inefficiencies in the way things are currently set up. Um, and I think with the, the sort of current pandemic, we've seen um, the importance to, to people of being able to get goods delivered um, sort of to their homes at, um, at the click of a button um, in as short a time as possible. Um, and I think the um, the sort of Maritime industry are really just sort of waking up now to uh, to understand how how technology can help um, to drive um, improvements in inefficiencies in in the uh, the operations um, that they undertake. Um, I think that sort of more and more um, as we move to things like automation um, and, uh, and the sort of use of um, real-time data and, and information uh, to improve processes. Um, historically, perhaps the maritime industry has, has been one that's, that's been more slow to, uh, to take up some of these um, technologies. Um, so I think there's really an opportune moment now um, with the sort of advent of, uh, of potential new trading conditions as a result of Brexit um, and, uh, and, and the a drive to really reduce uh, carbon emissions across the industry. 
um, in the next sort of 20 to 30 years um, to, um, to adopt technology more holistically right across the, uh, the shipping value chain. Solutions that are already in place or, or, a, or sort of where the current focus around development is um, very much around um, the, the sort of processes of tracking and tracing um, containers and cargoes um, and understanding how um, processes can be automated um, within the dock itself for unloading and loading of cargoes um, and then loading them on, onto trucks and, and trains for their uh, their onward destination. Um, so th there's a lot of focus around some of the things that we're, we're, we're sort of familiar with from maybe connected and autonomous vehicles, such as looking at uh, cyber security and, and how blockchain um, concepts can, can be brought into shipping to ensure that, uh, that data is, is secure and, and that sort of um, sharing of data between um, individual stakeholders and, and different uh, partners in the shipping value chain. Um, it is um, ensured that it's it's maintained to a secure standard, um, but also that it's it's accurately um, passed from one uh, part of the chain to another. Um, mentioned connecting autonomous vehicles, and another big area um, that of interest in in the maritime industry at the moment is around developing um, autonomous vessels um, for sea um, and. I think the focus at the moment has very much been um, around uh, military or search and rescue activities in, in that respect. But I think it, it's something that um, in, the, in the sort of next five to 10 years that we'll see commercial shipping entities and, and potentially even passenger shipping. My ambition and uh, I kind of hope the, the ambition of the members of the Maritime Forum is very much to help to promote and, and integrate technology into the industry um, and, and help them understand how it can be a real boost in terms of how they do things and, and really open up new opportunities, new markets as well um, to, to sort of integrate and, and join up services end to end. Um, I think it's quite interesting at the moment you look at um, what companies, organizations like Amazon are doing where they're sort of adopting um, the, the, the entire sort of chain themselves. So not only are they, uh, they packaging up and, and delivering the products uh, to people's homes, but they're also uh, procuring the, the ships um, and, the, uh, and the routes and, uh, and the ports and the, and the berths to be able to, um, to own the whole operation. Um, and I think that's, that's potentially something uh, that technology can, can play a massive part in. Um, helping to improve and, and drive efficiencies and, and sort of um, improve competition. I think at, at a sort of more um, people focused level, I think there's a big opportunity to start looking at um, expanding um, inland waterways and potential use of um, uh, sort of short, short uh, trips for passengers on, uh, on canals and rivers. Um, where I live in Leeds, there's a there's a, a small water taxi service between the uh, the city and the uh, the east docks, um, but I think that, that a lot of cities have, have a lot more potential to um, to grow that sort of thing as a as a, a sustainable method of transport that can be fully integrated into a, a wider public transport system and, and offers another alternative and a, a, a maybe a a less congested and more convenient alternative, a, um, a sort of a mass solution um, that, that cities are looking to implement going forward. 